With the financial might of a fizzy drinks empire backing teams in several sports, the energy drink company are usually successful in becoming the best in the sport. But what is it about Red Bull's philosophy that works so well? In this mini-series, I'll go through the three biggest football teams that share the Red Bull name, starting with the biggest and most hated Red Bull team, Rassenball Sport Leipzig. Red Bull acquired the playing rights to SSV Markranstad in 2009 with the goal of reaching the Bundesliga eight years later in 2017. They managed to get their season ahead of schedule in 2016 and since have cemented themselves as one of the three best teams in Germany. But why were they so successful? Why are they so hated? And how much further can the project go? Well, the real rise to power began in 2012. Manager at the time, Ralf Ranić, proposed a revolution. He wanted to release established and aging footballers, hire unproven young players, scrap the tried and tested defensive football that Leipzig were playing, and adopt a risky attacking game. The idea was to match the thrill-seeking brand identity that Red Bull uses in its marketing. Red Bull was about to grow some wings. Still, Ranić's work at Red Bull was controversial, particularly in Germany, where most teams have the 50 plus 1 ownership rule instead of a single rich owner. Supporters of other teams argued money fueled the rise rather than smart tactics and good signings. While Leipzig admit they did provide money to begin the project, they also claimed this was spent to develop football and ever since it's been self-sustaining. Depending on the quality of the young and energetic signings Leipzig target, they could progress further still. They finished second in their first ever Bundesliga season, something which they matched the season after. Getting the title would prove the project was worth it, both to the city of Leipzig and the corporation funding the East German club. Their appearance in the semi-final of the 2020 Champions League also proves they are worthy of their place at the top of the German pyramid, even if the way they got there was very controversial. You can see the ideologies at play with Leipzig, high tempo, fast transition and intense pressing football with young players who can be sold for a profit. It's no coincidence that there's been so much of a recent focus on British teenage footballers heading over to Leipzig, who are already well suited to the style of play. Emil Smith-Rowe, Ethan Apandu, Oliver Burke and Adamola Luckman have all headed to the first team in the past five seasons, while Matthew Bonswell joined the academy before leaving to go to Newcastle. So this is the exact type of player you should focus on. If any of this introduction sounded like something you'd like to do in your FIFA career motive, then that's good because I'm about to go through the squad and tell you what kind of signings they might be making in real life and just going through who's already good that they have. So, as always, on the screen you'll see the spreadsheet that I'm reading from and I'll go through each position one by one, suggest some transfers at the end and then hopefully you can have some fun in FIFA. So, at goalkeeper, Peter Galaski is a very good goalkeeper. His backup's a bit old, but you're probably not going to want to bother strengthening the goalkeeping position. At left back, you don't really use them, instead, you use left wing backs, but that's where Angelino comes in. He's good, he's got good potential, and he's young, but you haven't really got a second choice in that position. You might have to play Justin Clivert further back as a left wing back, and he doesn't have the best defensive stats, so maybe consider signing a left back. Centre back is a position that Leipzig is well covered in. Upa Kamano, Klosterman, Orban and Halstenberg are all very good and Ibrahima Kanate has potential to be just as good as the rest. You've also got Mukieli playing at right back who would be able to play at centre back too but he's your only right wing back so you're probably going to need to either get a backup or use Benjamin Heinrichs who's still pretty young and can develop pretty well too. So at centre back and right back I wouldn't consider signing any new players. You've got two central defensive midfielders, you've got Conrad Leimer and you've got Tyler Adams who both have good potential and already start off pretty good. As you'll see throughout the team, there's a lot of good young players so you won't have to wait too long for them to get their potential. So that's your defence and your central defensive midfielder positions covered with only strength at left back being needed. Moving into midfield, you'll notice that Leipzig don't actually use wingers, they've only got one winger in the whole squad and that's the previously mentioned Justin Kluivert who's a left midfielder. In central midfielder, you've got a good couple of options too. Marcel Sabitzer's the pick of the bunch with an 84 overall and a good age too, but you've also got the aging Kevin Campbell and Amadou Haidara who's got the potential to be pretty good too. So central midfield, although not the best, you could easily move one of these many attacking midfielders back or one of the defensive midfielders forward depending on what you need. So attacking midfield is probably the strongest position in the whole squad. Leipzig have Christopher Nkunku who's got potential to be really good. 
Of course, they've got Sabitzer who can play attack midfield too. Emil Forsberg's always been good, although he's starting to get a little bit old now. Danny Olmo has potential to be one of the best attacking midfielders in the world. And Dominic Spozolai also has potential to be insane. Once again, this is probably a position you don't need to strengthen too much because you have so much potential already there. Further forward, in the last position we're going to look at, we've got Striker, and they have a couple of very different options here. The starting strikers are all fairly poor, with the best being Yusuf Poulsen, who doesn't have the best finishing at 78 overall. Giant Norwegian Alexander Sorloff is also at the club, and so is Huang He Chan. So you've got a couple of options here, actually. Yusuf Poulsen is more of a hard-working, deep-lying playmaker kind of forward. Um, Alexander Soloth's an absolute target man. You won't expect him to run in behind, but he can hold up the ball really well. And Hang He Chan is just pace, basically. He doesn't have too much else. He's good at agility, he's good at running, and he can shoot pretty well. There's definitely potential to improve the squad in this area, and so I'm going to suggest some players for that now too. So, looking back at the whole squad, that's left back and striker that you'll probably need to strengthen if you want to compete at the top end of the Bundesliga. So, as previously mentioned, striker is going to be the first position we look at. Recently, Leipzig got rid of Timo Werner. This is why they've got such a big hole in their squad. Honestly, if he keeps declining at the level he is, I could see him going back to Leipzig to see if they can reclaim his career. So, that's one suggested signing you could possibly make, although it's probably not the most realistic one. Before he joined Manchester City, Gabriel Jesus was actually linked to going to Red Bull Leipzig himself. This was back when he was still playing in Brazil, and the transfer fee was argued to be around 15-20 million euros. However now, if you want to try and prize him out of Manchester City's hands, you might have a good striker, but it'll cost you around 50-60 to 60 million. There's no arguing that Gabriel Jesus does tick all the boxes for a Leipzig, although his price tag might put them off, and they don't usually spend that much money on a player. However, they've had transfer dealings with Manchester City in the past. He's good, he's young, he's good at pressing, he's fast, he can transition well, and he's in a position they actually do need to strengthen. So I think Gabriel Jesus would be a really good signing for Leipzig. Alternatively, if you want to spend less money, you've got Pat Sendaka at Red Bull Salzburg. This is a link that they use a lot, the Salzburg to Leipzig transfers, so if you want another fast player who's good at finishing, Pat Sendaka is absolutely the man for you. His work rates aren't quite as high pressing as someone like Gabriel Jesus, but if you bring Pat Sendaka across like they did last season with Hang He Chan, you're going to have a really good player after maybe just one or two seasons. The final suggestion for a striker is one they've actually already signed, and that's Brian Brobby. He's already agreed a deal to go to Leipzig, so signing him or moving him before your career mode starts is absolutely fair enough. He wouldn't be too expensive, he's got potential for days, as you might have seen on my Ajax career mode save, he's got around 85 potential now, and he's got pace, he's got a lot of strength, his stamina is maybe a bit too weak to play the Leipzig way, but for someone who's only a teenager still, he does have good stats for finishing, positioning and composure. So he could absolutely be the leading star in a Leipzig team to come. Combining something like Brobby and Patson Dacker is something I can definitely see happening in the next couple of years and would actually be a pretty lethal strike force. Both have pace, both are fairly tall, both can hold the ball up and both can finish. That's all you really need out of a striker in FIFA. Okay, so moving back further into defence, at left back you already have a player who's probably going to be good enough for Leipzig. At the moment, Marcelo Sarracci is out on loan at Galatasaray, but Sarracci is absolutely the modern attacking fullback. He's going to play very similarly to Angelino once he reaches his potential of 81. He's got good pace, he can get forward and cross, his defensive stats aren't the best, and he's not too strong or tall, but that's exactly what Angelino is and that's exactly what you need in a left wing back. Another option, although it won't be possible in real life, is signing Omar Richards from Reading. As I mentioned before, they do like signing English players in Leipzig, and Omar Richards is actually one of the best left wingbacks I've ever seen play in real life. He's absolutely rapid, and although that doesn't come across fully on FIFA where he has around 83 pace, he's gonna be good at going forwards and he already has better defensive stats than both Angelino and Saracci. In real life he couldn't join because he's already got a pre-contract deal with Bayern Munich, but it doesn't stop you in FIFA if you would like to sign Omar Richards. The final option I would go for at left back is Josh Doig. Currently playing for Hibernian, he's had a lot of attention recently from big clubs like Arsenal, Chelsea and AC Milan. 
With good stamina and good work rates for a left wing back, he absolutely would fit in with any kind of Bundesliga winning side once he's reached his potential. And as you know, Scotland do have a bit of a history of producing really good left backs at the moment, so I think Josh Doig could be the next player off that production line. But anyway, this video has gone on for a very long time. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching it all the way here. If you did make it to the end, thank you very much. Um, so yeah, my next video is going to be on New York Red Bulls, the one after that on Red Bull Salzburg, and I'll go into the differences between each one of those teams. There are actually quite a lot, um, different styles, different ways they buy players, different management tactics and stuff. So make sure you check those out when you see them on the channel. But until then, thank you for watching, subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.